If you've recently found that you're having an issue with fuel economy, maybe a pull while you're driving down the road, you pull off to the side of the road and you find that you have smoke coming from one of your rear wheels or it's overheating in some way, you could have an issue with the rear brakes or even the emergency brake cables. Either way, stick around so we can diagnose and fix this together. My name's Len from One Auto. Let's get into it. Once you have it up in the air, we're gonna to try to spin the wheel. We wanna to try to see exactly which one of the wheels has the issue. If it feels like it's hanging up, that's probably the culprit. Okay. This one might definitely have an issue. Let's go check the other side. At this point, I know for sure that one side of the vehicle's wheel spins as it should. This side right here, not so much. I'm going to focus my attention here. Once we figure out exactly what we need, we'll order it from oneauto.com. Now that we have the wheel off, let's confirm whether or not we're having an issue with the brakes themselves or the emergency brake. To do that, we'll carefully use a pry bar and start pushing back the caliper piston. We want to make sure that we can move this around. Now that we've confirmed that the caliper can move around, let's go ahead and test the rotor to see if it spins as it should here. It does move a little bit, but definitely not very much. That's due to the fact that the emergency brake shoes and hardware on the inside are pressed up against the inside here, but they can shift a little bit. Let's get this caliper out of here. Now we'll just hang this up here, putting no pressure on the flex hose. Ooh, look at that cable. If you can see your cable looks like it's bent like this right here, that can mean there's an issue in there where it won't be able to retract as it should. That's something we want to pay attention to. Of course, we'll check the rest of the emergency brake cable as well, but since we're here, let's just continue at this point. To make it so we can remove the rotor, we'll try to de-adjust the parking brake shoes located on the inside here. Typically, you will find a port. It might have a cover on it. Just use a small pry bar. You're going to find your adjustment cog and go ahead and turn that in one direction or the other until you can start getting a little bit of movement from this rotor. Whoa, well that's definitely gonna cause a noise, but we gotta figure out what could have caused this issue. While we're in this area, let's pay attention to the hardware. You're going to have a parking brake pivot. Typically, it will be attached to a parking brake lever and cable. Along the backside, we'll take hold of that cable and give it a little tug. We're looking to see if we can see this area pivot, and we wanna make sure that the shoes do expand and contract. Otherwise, they could get stuck in the off position or in the on position, like what looks like happened here. At this point, we know that the pivot is frozen on our application. We'll have a look at the cable. I can see that this is flexed, as I mentioned before. Well, you wanna thoroughly inspect it. The cable itself will make its way across the differential and then generally along the driver's side of the vehicle. When you're inspecting it, you wanna be inspecting the sheathing. It's common for it to be rubbed off in areas where there's either a mounting point of some sort or where there's areas where it crosses over other parts. While you're driving down the road, everything's going to be moving and vibrating. So if it's touching up against something else, it's going to potentially get damaged. Look at this one right here. Once you have the sheathing removed like this, moisture is going to make its way inside the emergency brake cable and it's going to cause issues, especially if you don't use your emergency brake. You know the term, use it or lose it. At this point, we know we need this e-brake cable, but we want to do a thorough inspection of both of the emergency brake cables. If it needs one, it might need the other. All right, so I've got great news. We ordered everything we need from oneauto.com. We've got our parking brake shoes, and we also have our emergency brake cable. When we're doing these parking brake shoes, I'm also going to be replacing the seal at the same time because I noticed that the axle seal is leaking as well. It only makes sense while I'm in there. Now, as we start pulling off the shoes, you wanna pay close attention to where each and every one of your springs is located and where your clips are. Start removing these springs. Looking at the condition of these, you should just go ahead and replace them. If you don't have any, just wanna make sure they are still in good condition. Quick look at what we had for parking brake shoes in the vehicle. And here's our brand new parts from oneauto.com. You can tell these are gonna make a big difference. Here's our e-brake actuator. 
Now, typically for this, if you were gonna take hold of this, you should be able to give it a little tug and this will be the pivot point. It does not move at all. We're going to have to make sure that we do have movement here and lubricate it before we go ahead and put everything back together. Let's take hold of it with some pliers here. We're just gonna try to work it, see if we can get it to move at all. Well, I got it to pivot apart now. We can remove the cable. Once we have that done, we'll bring this over to the bench and clean it up. Yeah, that's a problem. There we are. I've got that freed up and lubricated at this point. Let's continue cleaning the rest of this mess. Let's work on reinstalling our parking brake shoes and hardware now. You wanna have this hooked area slid down inside there. As you can tell, this still pivots as it needs to. We'll just press this in. We cleaned and inspected our mounting hardware. If yours doesn't look like it's reusable, just go ahead and replace it with brand new hardware. As for the adjuster, you wanna make sure you have it in the proper orientation and well lubricated. Make sure the actuator works as it should, of course. Once we have this area freed up, we're gonna continue on to the emergency brake cables. Go ahead and separate them from each other, assuming they are attached in some way. You're gonna find that it makes its way through several brackets. Some of them will be slide through and others will be something that's held in place, maybe along the differential. When you're removing and replacing the cables, always pay special attention to your ABS wires. If it's in the way, just go ahead and dislodge it. Once you get to the far end there, go ahead and disconnect it from whatever it's holding onto, whether it's another cable or it's along the pivot along the backside. At this point, the emergency brake cable's freed up and you can remove it completely. Oh wow, look at that. No wonder this cable didn't work at all. You hear that? That sounds good. Okay, let's get ready to install our brand new emergency brake cable. Now at this point, I can barely turn this rotor. I'm going to back it off just a little bit here. We don't want to have any drag. There we are. Once you feel as though you have it properly adjusted, you want to test its functionality real quick. You could, of course, make your way up inside the passenger compartment, press down on that parking brake lever. After that, you'd want to come out here and try to spin on that rotor a little bit, see if it has any movement. Otherwise, if you just want to hang out down here, go ahead and grab onto this cable. We'll give it a little tug and check to make sure it's definitely working as it should. That feels good. Okay, friend, we've got the vehicle almost all the way back together. All I have left to do now is to put on the wheel and torque it to manufacturer's specifications. Once I've done that, I'm gonna take it for a road test. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might help somebody, go ahead and share it with them. If you liked the video or even loved the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.